Welcome to All Things Fun Hydrographics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you five things that you didn't know about hydro dipping. Stick around and I'll tell you all about it. If you like watching hydro dipping videos, seeing really cool custom stuff being made, and you want to learn a thing or two along the way, make sure that you don't miss any of our awesome weekly videos. Go right down here, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so that you'll get a notification every week when we post something new. The films, yes, the films. This is the most exciting part of hydrographics is where you get to pick your pattern for your project. So one of the questions that we get asked all the time about these films is what are they made of? Well, it's very simple. It's polyvinyl alcohol film. What is that, you may ask? In simplest terms, this film is made of vinyl that is water soluble. And a lot of people don't know this, but it's also biodegradable. So what's inside of these films is what actually creates the pattern, and that is ink. So what happens is they take these big rolls of these polyvinyl alcohol films, they put it inside a printer, and the ink actually comes out just like you would on a regular inkjet printer. The water dissolves the polyvinyl alcohol, and the only thing left floating on top of the water is the ink so that we can transfer it to your project. That is why you often hear hydrographics called water transfer printing, because we are transferring ink from the water onto something that's painted. Now, PVA film isn't just limited to the hydrographics industry. It's used in a bunch of different other products as well. Something that you have probably used at one point or another that contains polyvinyl alcohol film and you didn't even know it is laundry detergent pods. Yes, these little water soluble packets that you use for washing your clothes are made with PVA film. Although these do look delicious, please don't eat them. Let's talk about hydro dipping paint and why it's different from other kinds of paint. So all paints, even the ones you buy at your local home improvement store, have what's called an open window. What that means is how long the paint stays open and allows it to accept more coats of paint. So basically you put one coat on, you have a certain window of time to put your next coat on and they actually bond to each other without them separating. If you exceed that amount of time, the only way to get the two layers to bond together is to scuff the surface to make sure that it has some mechanical adhesion. Regular paints like this Rust-Oleum paint has a very small window that allows the two coats to bond together and most importantly has a very small window for when you can apply clear coat. Clear coat is especially important in hydrographics work because it is what covers everything that we did to make your project look so awesome. You can find out information about your open times on different paints by looking at the back of the can. As you can see, it says right here, it dries to the touch in 20 minutes, blah, 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 blah. Apply a second coat or clear coat within one hour. So you see, paints like this are not good at all for hydrographics because they have to be painted, dipped, dried, and clear coated within that hour window. And I can tell you right now, that ain't gonna happen especially in a hydrographic shop like ours where we're doing multiple parts a day. Sometimes we'll paint one day, we'll dip the next, and then we may be clear coating three to four days down the road. So this stuff ain't gonna work. Which is why we use paints like this and like all these that are specifically made for hydro dipping. So what makes hydrographics paint so different from regular paints is the amount of time that that window stays open. Depending on the type and the brand of paint, some of them stay open for several days up to several weeks, which gives us a lot of time to work on our projects. And as you can see right here on the can, it says, will remain open to accept clear coat for up to 14 days after painting or dipping. And as busy as we've been lately, I really need all 14 days just so I can get your projects done. So sometimes things just don't go as planned. May have had some film that didn't turn out right or overactivated, underactivated, may have dropped it, scratched the paint. There's a bunch of different things that can happen. But when it comes to bad dips like this, there's an easy way to fix it. Oh, got a whole stack of not so great dips that I keep down here under the workbench. That'll work great for this demonstration. So here I've got some examples of some dips that didn't go so great. This one was a little bit undercolored. This one, the activator wasn't right. And this one, I'm pretty sure got thrown across the shop once or twice. So in order to fix these, we're gonna need to redip them. But before we can redip, we've got to repaint them. Well, the best way not to have to put a ton of layers of paint on these is just to remove the graphics. And you can do that with denatured alcohol. So I keep my denatured alcohol in a little squirt bottle like this. All I'll do is just take some, put it on a rag, and you can literally just wipe away all of the graphics, leaving the paint on your project. And then same thing on these. So denatured alcohol is really, really awesome for this. All I do, wipe the old graphics off, scuff it real quick, 
clean it and give it another coat of paint and we're back to dipping again. Now just like the Tide Pods that we talked about earlier, this stuff is not safe for consumption. I know it has the word alcohol in it, but you can't drink it. So calm down White Claw drinkers. And another fun fact, most of the manufacturers of this stuff nowadays actually add a chemical to it to make it taste disgusting so that you won't drink it. Genius. Absolute genius. So out of all the different kinds of materials that we dip here at ATF Hydrographics, the one that we get the most often is plastics. And the thing with plastics is if you don't prep them right, paint will not stick to them. Now I'm not even gonna sit here and pretend like I know all the chemical makeups of every type of plastic in the world, but when it comes to hydrographics, we group plastics into two different categories. Plastics that don't have to be flame treated and plastics that do have to be flame treated. So the way we figure out what needs to be flame treated and not is very simple. You only need two things a cup of water, and a razor blade. So I've got two different gun stocks here and they're both made out of plastic, but we don't know which one needs to be flame treated, which one doesn't. But let's start with this larger one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my razor blade and I'm gonna take the inside of this gun stock where nobody can see and a non-important, non-critical part. And I'm gonna just take a small sliver of plastic out of the inside. So once I have my teeny tiny little piece of plastic, I'm gonna put it down in the water and I'm going to move it around a little bit and see what happens. Now you can barely see it, but there's our little piece of plastic and it is sinking to the bottom. So on our other rifle stock, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a little small sliver out of the inside. Once we've got a little small sliver of plastic, put it down in the water. And as you can see, no matter how much I touch this thing and try to get it to sink, it just floats up at the top. So the piece that we cut from this bigger rifle stop sank to the bottom, which means that it does not need to be flame treated. The piece that we cut from this smaller stop floated to the top, which means it needs to be flame treated. And that's the little quirky way that you remember when you need to flame treat and when you don't. If it sinks, scuff and paint. If it floats, you need to flame treat it. Sink, scuff, float, flame treat. Just remember it. You'll, it it's catchy after a while, I promise. So I'm not going to go into all the details about flame treating. It's kind of a process, and there's a ton of videos out there already online. All you got to do is just look on YouTube. You can probably find some, and maybe I'll do one later on down the road. But all you need to know is just a really cool process, and you get to play with fire. <laughs> now, there's a lot of folks out there that think that Hydrographics is not durable because they're comparing it to other products, like the one that is the most popular, which is going to be Cerakote. So let's do a little experiment. Let's see which one is actually more durable. So this is just a cup that I hydro dipped. It's nothing special. It just has our regular hydro dip paint on it. It's been dipped in mossy oak, and then it has one coat of our dead flat clear coat on it. So this is a Glock magazine extension that we Cerakoted in stealth gray and then went over it with a battle-worn black finish. So this actually has two coats of Cerakote on it. So I have the sandblaster filled with the same media that we use for all sandblasting, and that is aluminum oxide. We're gonna start at a low pressure and work our way up. We're just gonna shoot one little spot, hold it for five seconds, and see which one lasts the longest in a sandblaster, which is probably the most violent thing that will ever happen to something that's been Cerakoted or hydro dipped. So I'm gonna put both of these in the sandblaster and go ahead and get started. I've got a second camera set up right over here so that I'll kind of shrink it down and put it over in the corner, but that way you can see everything live and you'll see that I'm not gonna mess with the regulator and I'm not gonna do anything special with the camera. No movie magic here, this is a real test. As you can see on the regulator, we are sitting at about 45 PSI. That's gonna be our first blasting pressure. All right, so we'll start out with the Cerakote, since that seems to be the one everybody thinks is the best. We'll hold it on this side for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. All right, and then we'll do the exact same thing with the Hydrographics at the same pressure. One, two, three, four, five. So here's our Cerakoted piece, and as you can see, a pretty good little circle off the side of it is missing. And here's our hydrographics piece right next to it. As you can see, one little bitty spot right there. It's actually smaller than the Cerakote spot. Same distance, same amount of time. All right, so now let's kick the pressure up a little bit. We're gonna go to 65 PSI. And just like before, instead of five seconds, we're gonna do a little quick burst and see which one holds up better.
one one thousand. And for the hydrographics, one one thousand. So there's the first side that we did, and here is the other side. And here is our hydrographics. That was our first spot, and this is our second spot. As you can see, still there. All right, let's go ahead and kick on this thing up to about 85. And we'll try it again. I've already done both sides, so this time we'll do the front of the Glock Mag extension. One 1,000. And we'll do the same thing we did in the middle on top. This time we'll do it on the bottom on the cup. One 1,000. So here's our Cerakote piece. There's the uh, one side we did. There's the other side. And there's the front side that we just did. And here is our hydrographics. We did this one first for five seconds. We did this little spot up here for a split second. And then this one at 85 PSI for just a second as well. Now you tell me which one's more durable. Now this test was by no means to knock Cerakote. It's a great product. We use it here all the time in the shop. I recommend it. It's very, very good and very abrasion resistant. But Hydrographics gets a really bad rap for no reason. This actually held up just a little bit better than Cerakote did to a sandblaster. Now all the terrible stories that you've probably heard it in the past is from somebody who probably didn't know what they were doing or they were using inferior products trying to get by for cheap. If you get it professionally done, it is usually very, very durable. If you want to learn more about our clear coats, I've got a video that I'll link to right up here that we went in extreme depth and covered all the different things that you need to know about Hydrographics Clear Coat. So if you've got something that you want to get Cerakoted or Hydro Dipped, you can check out our website, atfhydrographics.com. There we have a huge pattern gallery of all the available patterns that we have, all of our Cerakote information and our contact information so that you can get in touch with us to get a free quote for your next project. If you're interested in supporting our YouTube channel, you can do so by visiting any of the affiliate links down in the description box below. I've got links to Amazon products that we use here in the shop every single day. And I've got links to these guys right here, Freedom Line products, where you can get your hands on a bottle of Freedom Loop with our 10% off coupon code. I've got that down in the description box below. But I'll leave it right here as well. It's ATF10 and you'll get 10% off your entire order at checkout. So this video is not over just yet. We've got all the funny bloopers coming up here in just a second. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button if you like what you saw today. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you back here next week. I did push record, right? Uh, yeah, it's recording. Good, step one, push record, done. Specific to this industry is that um, it, is stuff paint i like colors so let's talk about hydro dipping paint and what makes it different from one of those cans just popped or something hit it weird right now that ain't going oh my god another one popped that was so freaking loud Make sure that you don't miss any of our awesome weekly hydrographics videos. Well, they're not all hydrographics. We just do stuff too. I should probably change that. What am I going to say? I don't know. All things fun hydrographics. Uh, we don't always just, mm, just need to start saying, welcome to home of, uh, because that's all I ever seem to say. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching, I'm going to be, 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 I'm First, we're gonna talk about all. <clears throat> the next thing we're gonna talk about is what happens when something messes up in the dipping process. Not that I would ever do that, because like everything I do is awesome. So I'm I can only talk about it. I can't really show you because I I don't I'll mess anything up at all. Nope, never. Really? I'm trying to talk. And there's a helicopter flying over the shop. I hope it's not the feds. That would be bad use denatured alcohol for all sorts, all sorts of stuff, all sorts, all sorts, all sorts. I don't know about other parts of the world, but he, <clears throat> the world's, other parts of the world's. In America, we use this stuff for all, 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 I can do this. The 
<laughs> that for hydrographics, we group categories into two different kinds of plastic. We group categories into two different. Ca did I say? Did we group categories? We group. Ca that's a, Oh my god. And some plastic floats. What does that got to do with? With um. What what? If I could just talk, I could film these videos so much faster. Rifle stop. It didn't float. It sank. I almost said float, or something that starts with an F. Dang it, that's hot. Why did I get them so close to my face? Woo! And things that um, I don't even know where I was going with this. Why am I talking?